I became interested in the field of bioengineering during my PhD. Uh, whilst my PhD was in polymer physics and thermodynamics, it focused on understanding the flow behavior and thermodynamic behavior of polylactide polymers. And it was actually only in my postdoctoral uh, fellowship at the University of Melbourne that by chance I met with the chair of uh, plastic surgery and soon after started actually using my expertise in polylactides and in thermodynamic phase behavior to make porous scaffolds for soft tissue engineering applications. And it's from that point in time onwards I realized that I'd probably missed my calling and that I became really passionate about understanding stem cell biology, development, tissue regeneration and repair so that we could actually make better scaffolds that would engender cells to do what we wanted them to do and actually repair tissue in a functional manner. So the bioengineering community is now a substantial force, um, both in terms of the, the number of you know, researchers in the field, as well as the fact that there are some now some very large global industry sectors that rely on bioengineering um, in terms of fundamental principles, as well as obviously technologies and applications of those principles. So if we think about bioimaging, uh, in the last 10 years, the advances that have been made in bioimaging now allow us to see tissue level resolution, single cell resolution actually within our own bodies. And not just to visualize it, but actually to then work out the best way in which to treat any particular disease or any particular damaged tissue. Uh, and then when we add to that theranostic devices, which are able to be delivered in particular to that site, and then to repair that site or to treat, for example, cancer, these are major real world applications um, of bioengineering. Papers published in APL Bioengineering will be of the highest quality. They'll have clear impact, clear novelty, and clear translation, or at least a path to translation, so that they can be seen to have, at some point in time, uh, major impact on the field of bioengineering, and obviously on the sectors associated that are impacted by bioengineering outcomes. Researchers in the field of bioengineering are quite familiar and comfortable with an open access journal. The other advantage of an open access journal is that it allows exactly that, open access to a broad range of disciplines, a broad range of sectors, uh, and bioengineering covers both academe through to industry, through to public sector research, and of course the public also know that bioengineering is having a major impact on their lives. To get published in APL Bioengineering, Make sure your work is well developed and comprehensive. Make sure your paper is concise. Make sure your message is clear. Importantly, make sure that any reader can clearly gain new insight, can see a clear path of your work to an impact, either in the very near future or in potentially the distant future. And make sure, most importantly, that it's exciting to a reader and a reviewer alike. I think that that's the best way to get published in APL Bioengineering.